Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to be continuing on with this week's theme of favorite live performances with a band that we've actually had on the channel before and I was enthralled with. I am more than happy to return to checking out Bent Knee. This song is called Sunshine. It's from Live at Davis Square Theater. Looks like it took place in July of 2014. And from what I understand, it is a sort of remake or reimagining of the old 1940s-ish song, You Are My Sunshine. So let's see what's going on here. Huge build up into nothing. Now Let's see what goes on. Night, dear, <laughs> as I was sleeping, I dreamed I held you in my arms. When I awoke, dear, I was mistaken. Digging into some haunting ideas. Speaking of haunting. I'll always love you and make you happy. I love how there's like this uplifting positivity. And then just like tons of instability to the chord progression. Yeah, they're pulling a lot of interesting emotions out of this usually a sad story. build up into nothing this needs to be subverted we need a build up into something big at the end of the song you really loved me and no one else could come between but now you've loved me to love another you have shown
I don't think I was breathing there at the end. I really don't. <laughs> Golly. All right, so. The original 1940s-ish, I probably should should have looked up the exact date on that one before starting this uh, video. Uh, the original definitely has these tinges of sadness to, me, to it. I kind of see the song as a ballad. I'm sure kind of probably most people do as well. Um, it's, it's about the pain of losing somebody that, you know, you love, not in the way of, of death, but them moving on, uh, finding something else to do, uh, as far as relationship wise, separating from you and, and finding someone else to love. And, um, they really dug in and found some new angles emotionally to, extrapolate uh, and excavate from this lyrical idea. There really isn't a lot of the original song's musical ideas in this one. It's a complete reimagining of it. The only thing that was uh, carried over is the lyrics, and they really put their own spin on some of the ideas in there. There's still a lot of sorrow to it. I would still say that the core idea of the song is sadness. However, it is not just a straight up ballad. Uh, it's, it doesn't have that uh, sort of bluesiness to it that says, well, I'm sad, right? Sadness is not a complex emotion and Bentony knows this and they really want to dig into something with a bit more complexity to it. So they say, what is sadness what does sadness bring about and i think it's interesting to go through some of the ideas in this song and look at some of the concepts here we have uh growing amounts of pain in the song at the beginning there's a bit of um maybe some sort of catching on to this idea that uh, the person that they love so dearly is not as in love with them. And uh, the singer puts a lot of sort of suspicious uh, feelings inside of her melody line, such as the instability moving into the third and fourth bar of the section. I, I, start, I stated that at the beginning of her melody, there's actually a lot of mostly positive elements going on uh, compared to what's going on with the chord stuff. But it's usually in the second sentence, which is the third and fourth bar, is where we start. I think it's the third and fourth bar. I might be counting a little fast. Anyways, the second half of the melody line, um, she really introduces a lot of instability. Uh, the chords that are selected are not nice leading tones into nice resolutions. There's a lot of dissonance um, and these elements of dissonance and irresolution and instability create this concept of uh, sort of shakiness and suspicious uh, suspicion rising and um, just overall things are not what they seem, things are not as they should be, and I really enjoy that. I think it's a fantastic take, and that's just the beginning of the song. It is such a nice little um, unexpected moment just to kick off the entire song. Plus, a lot of these sections begin with the uh, simple guitar, uh, just one or two notes, uh, being played for for the entire uh, part until maybe a violin comes in or something. It's a very subdued section, um, which really allows, as I mentioned before, when you have instruments taken out, gives a lot of spotlight to the melody line, which happens to be the vocalist, and the lyrics are very key to this song.
Everybody else is really doing atmospheric work and texture work. So we have these massive swells. The entire song is swells. Um, if we were to graph this out or if you looked at... Uh, what is that graph uh, when you see the uh, like the bubbles and spikes in audio? I can't think of what that graph is called. Maybe it's just an audio graph. <laughs> I don't know. It's slipping my mind. But anyways, you would see these gradual rises and then it would shrink back down and rise again. And we would have quite a few of these actually. And I think it's interesting because it creates a loop. And looping in music is usually more of a, a functional idea. We loop in modern music because it's easier to write. We loop in modern music because it's easier to remember. Uh, we loop in modern music because it's expected and expectations help improve first listens. There's a reason that the conventional composition structure of first chorus, first chorus, bridge chorus works so well why it's present everywhere well actually i guess i have that for first there's a reason why it's present everywhere and that's because it works very well uh psychologically people want to listen to things that they are familiar with and even just having a sort of baseline roadmap is going to improve a first listen on a song for your mainstream casual listeners um so it's interesting that they're utilizing a loop not for, not in a functional way, just because that's how most people would do it, but in order to drive home an idea. And this idea seems to be that the character of the story, whether it's the vocalist or, uh, you know, whatever, is uh, repeating this loop. Maybe they see something wrong with their relationship and they just kind of hint at it. Um, the second time through, uh, you know, maybe things have resolved, but we're starting to see a little hint of the relationship falling apart again, and the vocalist is expressing those ideas. And the swell is bigger this time, and I think that the louder part was actually longer on the second time um, to show that the instability of the relationship was... Uh, you know, rockier for a longer period of time, but then it quiets down again. And, you know, this cycle repeats uh, the, the loop of maybe not necessarily a toxic relationship, but definitely one that isn't working, but is sort of being forced to work. It has these moments between what seem to be, uh, you know, good times, good moments in a relationship, and then the rockier aspects of it. Um, so we have these ideas uh, in the loop itself. It's, it's the back and forth. Um, but I also like how the lyrics begin to take on a different context through both this lens and the idea of the chordal in instability. Um, there was one line, I think it's on the second time through, when the singer says, uh, you'll regret... Uh, taking my sunshine away or regret not loving me this something along those lines but it's the regret part you'll regret doing this you know not not sticking with me and um, the way that she says it implies anger right it, imp it implies wrath in the original it was more of just uh, a light-hearted way of kind of being a little passive aggressive about it uh, it's not saying that, uh, you know, I'm sad about the relationship. It's that you might be happy now, but you'll be sad later. You're going to regret this action in the future. But this one has some has some really sinister overtones to it. And I like how that comes out because of the musical ideas that are being uh, placed on the sound floor beneath it, really creating some of these uh, ideas of tension and instability and almost a little bit of, uh, you know, sinister vibes. And then, of course, all of this culminates in the section that quite literally <laughs> put a tear in my eyes. I, I really thought, <laughs> I really thought I was just going to start bawling. It was uh, an extremely powerful performance there. 
But it's when she sings the titular line that everybody knows, you are my sunshine, my only sunshine. But she doesn't sing it with the typical melodic phrasing. She picks a note. I think the first note is actually like a little under. And then she goes into the next note and she uses that for every note. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. And she sticks on this note and there's something so unnatural about it, especially since she's using this squeaky uh, falsetto. Uh, I think it's a falsetto. It could be a mixed head and chest, but it's definitely an unnatural sounding um, note. Uh, it, it's faint, but it's real high pitched, and she's just picking this one note and hitting it rhythmically. Bop, 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 and it is, <laughs> to me, it's it's this breaking point between sorrow and rage, and and just all these negative emotions turning into. Uh, you know, right on the verge of that cathartic release. Maybe it's a psychotic break. Maybe it's a violent outbreak, uh, you know, and an, an, a violent outward explosion. Um, whatever, though, it's like you could tell something not right is about to happen. Uh, and her voice actually cracks on one of the notes. Um, I think it was like the end of a phrase. She was coming out of it uh, and it cracks just a little bit. And uh, yeah. What a delivery. And then, of course, after that line, uh, she does this huge crescendo and slide um, into the big ending. Everybody is just, you know, just playing loud, playing chaotically, lots of attacks going on. Uh, there's not really a lot of legato work. It almost sounds like there's not really any strong idea of chordal identity either everybody seems to be playing whatever they want and it's just this wall of sound while she is yelling this titular line again uh and and it is it is a culmination and explosion of all of the ideas emotional ideas that she's explored so far the sort of suspicion the anger the resentment the sorrow, all of it coming out, and it is this hyper-complex idea of being sad. It's all these other emotions tied into it, which is actually a lot more normal, I would say, for most humans in this situation of, of feeling betrayal. It's not just the loss of the relationship. Uh, it's the betrayal of somebody that you absolutely love not loving you back. And I kind of get the idea because... Ah, this this can kind of go into like some uh, unrequited love ideas, which kind of makes it a little creepy. But I kind of get the idea from the song that it is more of the rug getting swept out from under the narrator or the, the main character. They thought the relationship was fine. And then out of nowhere, they're like, uh, you know, this is over. And then the next day they're with somebody else. All right. And that that sort of... Uh, betrayal that you can feel like maybe you know this has been planned for a long time how long have they been seeing this person and sort of these bottled up uh, less <laughs> less positive uh, emotional elements of the end of a relationship it's not just the sorrow of it and these guys just really found a way to dig into it and when I thought the song was over they took a, a couple maybe a bar a couple of seconds of uh, some quieter moments and then just went right back into it uh even heavier i think they put some distortion on the vocalists uh just really digging into this this unbottling of these emotions that have been kind of kept down possibly because you're not allowed to show these emotions <laughs> you're not allowed to have these uh you know be exceptionally upset about this kind of stuff at least not how i view it in the culture I live in. You're supposed to just, uh, you know, let it roll and, and move on. More efficient to see. You'll do better next time, buddy, kind of thing. Um, but, I mean, if if it if it affects you like this, I mean, you got to let it out. And hopefully it's in a healthy way. <laughs> this song seems to be in sort of an unhealthy way. Um, but the exploration of those uh, emotions 
is nonetheless still quite relevant. And uh, yeah, just phenomenal. I, I don't know how often I could listen to this song. It definitely is an emotional an emotional track. Not something I would necessarily listen to casually, but I am exceptionally uh, impressed by what they could get out of this 80 year old song at least um, and and really injecting some new life into it. So those are my thoughts on Bent Knees Sunshine. This is where you guys come in though. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you thought about it. If you enjoyed it or not. Uh, if you agree with me. Maybe if you have a different take. I mean as usual these are just my interpretations. And I could be far off. I could be spot on with the uh, you know artist intent. But that does not discredit nor nullify anybody else's experience. And maybe you felt a completely different way. Or a completely different narrative. Or themes being created in a song let me know how it affected you when you're done with the comments you can head up to the description box there's a link tree link in there super nifty it has every link you could ever need for the critical community it's got discord it's got patreon it's got blocked videos it's got request spreadsheet it's got uh the twitter check it out also if you could like subscribe and ring the bell all three of those things help out the channel immensely I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC, with yet another favorite live performance. And until next time, remember to be critical, but never cynical, of the music you listen to. And have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening, whenever you choose to watch my videos.